What if things don't end up like they're supposed to? What if this work, this energy I've invested doesn't pay off? What if I stay average? What if my story was never meant to be unique? What if I try and I fail? What if my friends stop calling? What if I let my family down? What if people don't like what I have to say? What if my idea is a little too out there? What if I'm pushing things too far too quickly? What if the worst possible scenario happens? What if I lose everything? What if success is for someone else? What if I'm meant to work, to pay bills, and to sleep? What if the starting role is just too much for me? What if I was a born follower? What if I never find happiness? What if I don't choose the right path? What if I get lost? What if I can never be as good as the person standing next to me? What if a life of meaning will always be something I'll have to stare up at, wishing, dreaming? Or what if I just change the way I look at the world? What if today is just the beginning? What if I decide who I'm going to be and become it? What if my actions can create a ripple effect that will transcend space and time? What if impossible isn't fact? What if it's opinion? And what if I don't buy it? What if this new world means that existence starts with me? What if I can be the one people look up to? What if my past got me here but has no effect on where I can go? What if every single day is a fresh start? What if I can be the one who defies the odds? What if my dreams become the standard? What if my ideas change how people see reality? What if the term difficult is nothing more than a cop-out? What if my doubters ignite the flame that is my success? What if my fear of mediocrity overcomes my fear of the unknown? What if second place is no longer an option? What if I make the choice to live every second of my life like it's a miracle? And what if that's exactly what every second is? What if it's time to start living like it? To start thinking like it? To never sell myself short? What if nothing good happens until I believe it? What if I stopped wasting my time trying to convince others? Because I am the only one who must be convinced. So a man sitting at the kitchen table, having a morning cup of coffee, reading the paper, when his son comes sprinting down the stairs, all amped up, ready to go out and play. Last night, the man promised him that they'd spend the day together. So he blocked off his whole day, ready to spend some quality time with his son. But he could use just a few more minutes, right? Reading the paper, just kind of finishing up his morning routine. So he has this idea to buy himself a little time. He rips out a picture of the world from the newspaper a few pages back, tears it into about 20 tiny pieces, puts them on the table in front of his son, says, let's play a game, right? Here's a puzzle. As soon as you can put this picture of the world back together, we'll go outside, we'll start our day. Picks up the paper, continues reading. Less than three minutes go by. His son excitedly pulls down his dad's newspaper, says, dad, I'm done. And the father looks up with an expression of amazement on his face. I had astonished his son was able to do that so quickly. Obviously, he asked him how. And his son explained that a piece of paper fell on the floor. And when he bent over to pick it up, he could see through the bottom of the glass table that there was a picture of a man on the back of all the little pieces. 
So we sat up, turned all the pieces over, and he put the man together. And once he did that, the world just fell into place. As soon as I read that, my mind went right to that long road, that journey to success. So often, we think of the world as the rule book, the decider of fate. We don't think of ourselves as that vehicle to success. And this story has a very unique way of uncovering that specific truth. We get from the world what we invest in ourselves. Right, the patience, the daily work, commitment, focus, all these things that transform us, unlock even the toughest doors. Because piecing together the world you want is an impossible task if you haven't created your ideal self first, if you haven't built yourself up every day, making yourself a little better, a little stronger. In the same sense that piece by piece, bricks become walls, that become houses, that become cities, that proceed to make up our reality. You are your greatest asset. You need to treat yourself that way. Invest in education, invest in health, invest in happiness. Maximize the person and your experiences and your accomplishments will follow. I was once told that to get what you want, you need to focus on it with everything you have. Better yourself every day. Make your world revolve around success. Build winning habits, winning mentalities, winning mindsets. Then you can watch the world unfold before you. And when that time comes, it will be because of everything you've invested into yourself, into being better. The world, reality, life, it had no choice but to follow suit. There's something I want to address for a few reasons. One, because every day I'm asked questions that pertain directly to this. Two, because it will change how you think about your future. And it's that effort and talent always find a way, period. There are no exceptions to this rule. And the funny thing is, the people who are worried, that haven't found their path, they don't know where to focus their skill set, terrified about the future, if that's you, you're doing the work. Right? You're thinking about the right things. You've made your life a priority. It's the dude on the couch eating chips for 12 hours that needs to be concerned. And I would guess that he's probably not. And so here's the golden ticket. Right, It's that idea of repurposing your anxiety or any uncertainty you have into a sense of exploration because it's a good thing. Caring is step one. Having drive is step one. And you are there. You have the pieces. Just like a Ferrari in park. Yeah, it's not moving, but is there anything to be concerned about? Right? Think it's on the freeway. Of course it's going to fly. Maybe it doesn't know which freeway. But who cares? That's the fun part. It has everything it needs. Sometimes it's not about where you're going. Sometimes it's about what you have, who you are, what you value. Odds are if you have the drive to improve yourself, you're going to improve, so relax. Because the truth is, life is not as serious as we make it out to be. It just isn't. You could pack your shit, you could go live on an island for five years, come back and reacclimate, and things would be the same here. Once you see that, that you are the initiator of success, not the class you choose, the person you date, the job you take, you are the Ferrari, the million dollar man. As told
Tolkien said, all who wander are not lost. Winners find ways to win. That's what they do. So you might as well trust and enjoy the process. When I think of the people in my life, there are many that I consider to be heroes. People who have helped me grow, shape the person that I've become over the years. Some I'm lucky enough to interact with every day, right? I know them personally. Others I've admired from a distance. Reading their books, learning from their example. It's safe to say that without these people in our lives, we would not be where we are today. They provide the knowledge, the skills, and the tools to take on the world. But what they cannot do is push you through the door. They can help you build your wings, but they can't make you fly. For that, you have to look inward to the most important hero in your life. The one who can save you from any situation. Who can take you to heights that you've never dreamed of. The one who decides if you fail or succeed long before the challenge is even attempted. The one you see in the mirror. A hero is someone who's willing to take the dangerous road to go where most people will not, to put everything on the line for what you believe in. Heroes by their very nature are exceptional. Expect that of yourself. Know that just because everyone sees something a certain way, it doesn't mean it shouldn't be challenged or adjusted. You are an innovator, striving towards something new. And heroes don't run from the unknown, they seek it out and find the strength to embrace it. Victory is a product of struggle, of pain. Of the times when the walls were closing in around you, but there was never a doubt in your mind that you'd get yourself out. how bad you want to succeed, to win. Because once you've decided that you want it, that you truly want it, you'll know that you'll find success. Because you know that you'll do whatever it takes. Heroes don't quit. And having this faith in yourself, it brings a sense of power, of adrenaline. There is nothing you can't do, nothing you can't overcome. The world transforms into your kingdom. And while it doesn't owe you anything, you owe it to yourself to take what's yours from the world. So be your own person. Live with courage. And follow your heart. It will never lead you astray. Sometimes it's not easy to see the finish line, to peer down that long, treacherous road ahead and feel completely confident that things will work out. You know, that success is waiting there for you in one form or another. Obviously, there's no road signs letting you know that your progress is paying off. There's no blatant indicator that you're on the right track. Essentially, there's nothing. Right, nothing but the feet underneath you, 
taking you one step at a time to a fate that's completely unknown. And it's in this instance, while looking destiny in the eye, that you have to remember. Anyone can sail in smooth waters, anyone can dance when the music is playing. The great leveler, though, is how you live when it's not. When you're listening like your life depended on it, but there's no song to be heard. How do you push forward? You know, no one else can get you there. There's no shortcuts to success. You'll find that the answer's in your chest. Because it's there, you'll find the melody that's been pumping through your veins since the first day you opened your eyes. Helping you create your own music, your own song, your own voice. It's what has the power to get you through to the next level. When your instinct tells you to quit, that maybe it's just not worth it. When most give up, it's why you'll be able to hang on. Because the song will come. The skies will clear, the sun will rise. But you have to know that, and you have to know it now. When all you have is ambition and a plan. When it's just you, your song, and the road ahead. There's no concrete evidential triumph, but you don't need that. Persistence during times of doubt, during improbability, that's what makes triumph so rare, so precious. It moves the strong willed forward to bigger and better things. Things aren't handed to you, but they materialize over time. They transform from nothing to something. They emerge from hardship, out of ideas that were perceived by others as crazy, as most achievements throughout the course of human history were. Let people talk about odds, how difficult success is. They can't look inside of you. They can't hear your song. They don't know what you have. But they will find out later, when you've gotten past the mud, the dirt, the grind, the stuff that no one wants to endure. When you're singing your song to the world, for yourself, but also for them, for those who need it, those seeking their own song. One day you'll be able to tell them what it took, how it wasn't easy, but you knew that if you pushed hard enough, the stars would align. You heard the music before it played, and how sweet the sound. I spent some time in Roanoke, Virginia, one of the most beautiful places I've ever lived. It's this little valley surrounded by the Blue Ridge Mountains. And across the street from where I lived was a park. You could look over in the evening and you would see hundreds of fireflies flying around. And I always thought it was such a cool thing, you know, bringing back to when I was young, when I was a kid, and it was such a thrill in running around trying to chase those things. And seeing this day in and day out led me to think, you know, 24, 25 years later about all the things that have changed in my life. Back then, life was pretty straightforward. You know, as a child, you place your value on what feels right in the present. You're not thinking about two years down the road or wondering what others are going to think. Your creativity and your sense of exploration are running on all cylinders. Then something happens. We begin to understand the way of things. We see what's valued in society. We see what's expected. We see how success is defined. And so begins our ascent up the ladder. And rung by rung we climb, looking above us below us to see where others are, see how fast they've moved in relation to us. 
And eventually this coincides with how we see ourselves. And as you know, how you see yourself is the best indicator of what you will become. Which is why when so many people aren't happy with their day to day, that's a huge red flag. That's breathing that's not living. Folks have been climbing this ladder their entire lives and never stopped to ask if it's where they were meant to be. Maybe the top of the community ladder isn't what you want, but you never thought you only acted. And if you don't think, if you don't ask yourself the question, you will climb and you will climb and you will climb until you burn out. I try and spend a few minutes every day thinking about this. It's the most important thing I can spend time on. It's my life. It's more important than green paper. It means more than the opinions of others. It's the backbone of everything. Everything around me and the meaning I give it stems from how I identify myself, who I am. Which brings me back to those fireflies, to running around on a hot summer evening, not having a care in the world. There is something intrinsically perfect about those moments. Life is about peak experiences, joy, excitement, so that you never lose that spark because it's all that separates us from every other being on the planet. If we don't have that, what do we have? What separates us from ants moving dirt? Monotonous action based on instinct. There's just no thrill in that. Why not create a life that allows you to feel that excitement every day? Don't act because you're supposed to. Act because you so desperately want to that there's no other option. Because you couldn't live without the adventure. You couldn't pass on the experience. Here's a secret. If you become fixated on a life that means nothing to you, at some point, you will probably get to the top. And from there, you will have a beautiful view of everything you missed out on. So maybe there is something to the whole chasing firefly routine. Maybe a four-year-old running after a glowing bug with a jar deserves more credit than he's given. Wake up and see the world as it truly is. See what you are. One of billions running around this place with a heart that beats and a handful of potential. You're owed nothing. You're not entitled to anything. Essentially, you, just like everyone else, was given a canvas and a blank page. If you want to do something, change something, make something of yourself, you have the tools. You've always had them. We all have. That's what makes success such a curious thing. Why is it that some people maintain that winning mentality? They expect greatness out of everything they do. And others have the opposite mentality. They see greatness as a far off thing like something you see in the window of a store, something to just look at, to dream about, not realistic. Why? We all know the formula. Sacrifice and working hard enough at anything, it will get you results, you'll make progress. The problem is belief. People see greatness as something other than themselves. Something beyond them, beyond their capabilities. The thought is not entertained. 
book. Where you are now, where you have been, it has no impact on where you can go, on what can happen in the future. The possibility of something better is always, always there. Earlier today, I came across an interview with Will Smith. I'm listening to it and I almost jumped up and down. This guy describes success better than anyone I've ever heard. Two things, very simple. One, he believed in himself. As a kid, he always knew that where he was was temporary. It did not define him. It was part of a journey to something better. Two, he outworked everyone around him. He was never the most talented or gifted, but he molded the talent he did have into skill, into the mastery of an art. And now he's reaping the benefits. He wasn't born into multi-million dollar movie contracts. He was born with potential, and so were you. There's a great quote that getting what you want is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. When you combine belief with the persistent action to back it up, those two things will take you anywhere in the world. That's why the words I can't are so toxic. So debilitating. Next time that comes to mind, ask yourself, why? Not figuratively or hypothetically, literally ask yourself why you can't do what you want to do. If you want to win, you need to see yourself as a winner. You need to associate with winning. No champion ever got there accidentally. They knew they belonged with the best. So before another minute goes by, ask yourself whether you do. Because that simple acknowledgement opens the door to infinite possibility. The most important story in our lives is the story untold, where there are no flaws, there are no setbacks, just an open road. The story untold is where you step away from the world behind your eyes and you embrace the one that's in front of them. Right, this story is different. You can't touch it, you can't grasp it, but you can feel it. It's not our past self, right? It's not that fiction that we become tied to and mistakenly identify with. It's something different. It's anything different. It's a blank page, it's a new chapter. It's an opportunity to bring to life all those times we said, I wish. Well, my friend, here is a pen and a page. And guess what? Everything that happened before right now might as well evaporate into thin air because line by line, you can rewrite reality. You are not yesterday's problems. You are certainly not yesterday's results. You are right now. See, because more destructive more disheartening than having to ascend the tallest mountain on the planet is the simple way that we categorize ourselves, that we define ourselves by our past. We're stuck in chapter five, where the hero isn't even aware that he or she is a hero, where the villain hasn't been conquered and the odds, man, they don't look great. Why identify with that? Why stop there? Look, no good story is without conflict. No great empire appears without struggle. But that's not a defining characteristic. It's just par for the course. And here you are, with the chance to rewrite whatever ending you want, to tell whatever story you want to tell, there is just no greater freedom. 
And when you step back, when you really assess, you realize that life is a collection of stories, of events that unfolded as we allowed them to and told through our experiences and perspectives. The only truths that exist are the ones we believe. The only facts out there are the ones we've agreed to accept. We are merely authors, writers, and creators. If you're not happy with your storyline, change it. That's the beauty of life. You can make yourself the hero minute by minute, word by word. The underdog, the long shot, the change common perception that grabbed reality and shook it. Be the reason that fiction becomes fact. Write something worth remembering. I've spent the last year incredibly focused, building, creating. In fact, I've spent my whole life building, putting countless hours into something that I believe wholeheartedly will allow me to leave this place a little better than I found it. And I'm not unique in this way, right? We all have ambitions. We all work toward positive change in our lives. It's essential. But like everything in our world, there is more there than meets the eye. Last weekend, I decided to head over to the beach. Summer's turned to fall. I wanted to get one last trip in, kind of bring closure to an amazing summer. And I was walking around and came across a sandcastle standing in beautiful detail, seemingly untouched by human hands after being completed, yet slowly deteriorating from the elements. And seeing this was a little disconcerting, right? You have this natural tendency to want to preserve it and the effort that went into building it. But the more and more I thought about it, the more it occurred to me that the true beauty of it all is not in the sandcastle. It's not in the towers sculpted to perfection or the meticulously carved out doors, windows, and bridges. They are only symbolic. We don't live for the final product. We live for the journey, the adventure, the joy of the process, tackling the unknown and turning it into something of beauty. That's why we get up every day. That's why landscapes, oceans, and skylines run away with our imagination. They're representative of what makes us feel alive. Sometimes it becomes extremely easy to forget that. The degree, the championship, the executive position, these things we seek, they are validation, right? But they are not life. What you do every day is life. How you turn ordinary things into extraordinary things, cherish the time you spend. There is nothing of greater importance. Sand castles will not stand forever. The tide, the wind, a million things will assist in bringing the sand back to its original form. Just like us, its time is finite. But the joy of creating such a masterpiece can never be lost. That's why we build. It's why we create. So 
imagine with me that it's a fall morning years from now. Right, the sun is shining through your window, you'd get out of bed just like it's any other day. Except this particular day would be different. It would be your last day on earth. So you'd walk outside and begin reflecting on life from day one to where you are now. And in that moment, my question to you is, what would you value most looking back? I've always been intrigued by this question. Even though it's a tough one, I like it because it's a simple reminder of what's important. It brings much needed perspective. So what would that moment look like, your last day, when you get to look back on everything you've done, right, the legacy you've made? You most likely won't focus on how tough the climbs were. You probably won't remember the battles and the struggles. What you'll remember are the moments of victory, the times when you were able to do something significant to contribute to the world, to help and be near those who mean the most to you. What we learn as we get older, as we progress through life, is that failures dissolve, right? They fade away. They provide us with the wisdom that we so desperately need, and then they disappear into the universe. It's the other piece that needs our attention. That quote we've heard a million times about regretting the things that we don't do more than the things we do, and how fear constantly gets in the way of our potential. So imagine, right, as you continue this walk outside, that you think about your dreams, the things that fear kept you from becoming. Because on your last day alive, in the face of death, you'll probably realize that the worst possible scenario wasn't as scary as you thought. Study after study shows that the biggest regret of people with limited time left is living according to the expectations of others, not having lived a life that was true to themselves. We're fortunate enough to have that wisdom now. Why would we not act on it? Don't let yourself be the person who looks back and dreams about what if. Do your dreaming in the present. We're all writing our stories. Make yours a thriller. Make it a bestseller. Live now. Let that fear fade away because in a universe where your existence essentially equates to a drop of rain in a thunderstorm, what the hell is there to be afraid of? Be the type of person who finishes this walk outside with a smile, content with the journey, all the turns, the adventures, the small failures that shaped who you are, the successes that lifted you up. As the old saying goes, everyone dies but few truly live.